Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this CASIS webinar for technology development and applied research on the ISS National Laboratory. My name is Liz Warren. I am a Senior Program Director with the Center for the Advancement of Science and Space. Before we begin, I want to inform you that this webinar is being recorded and will be available on the CASIS website shortly. If you have any questions, please enter them in the questions box. We will have some time at the end of this webinar to address some of these questions. If we don't get to your question today, we will post a full list of questions and answers on our website. With that, let's get started. This is our seventh National Lab Research Announcement of 2021. This research announcement is focused on technology development and applied research on the ISS National Lab. As this is a request for proposals, our goal with this webinar is to highlight the essential elements of what we're looking for in a proposal, and also to answer some of your questions. This is an outline of the topics I will cover today. But before I leave this slide, I really wanted to draw your attention to the images on the right because they concisely tell the story that I would like to get across with this webinar. On the top, you have an artist's rendition of an operational satellite, a docking and refueling tanker that was designed by OrbitFab. OrbitFab plans to launch that tanker into space later this year. Now, that launch isn't going to happen from the ISS, but nevertheless, if this is successful, it could kickstart OrbitFab's ability to provide commercial satellite refueling services in space to paying customers. But if you look down at the lower picture, you'll see that OrbitFab in fact performed tests with a prototype with the assistance of space station crew member Christina Cook. And they demonstrated and gained a better understanding of the fluid transfer characteristics in microgravity. This work was, supp was supported by a CASIS grant. So over the span of about three years, they've gone from the lower picture, testing the prototype, to the upper picture, actually having a commercial offering for the marketplace. So this is exactly what we're trying to achieve with this technology development and applied research technology announcement. CASIS is the nonprofit organization that manages the ISS National Laboratory under a, under a cooperative agreement with NASA. In 2005, the U.S. Congress designated the U.S. portion of the ISS as a national laboratory. And the intent was really to open up access of the facility to industry, academia, and other government agencies, all seeking to leverage the unique laboratory for scientific work that would improve the quality of life on Earth and also as a tool for STEM education to inspire the next generation of explorers. So to fulfill this role of managing the ISS National Lab, we work in very close coordination with NASA. We also work in coordination and partnership with a group of private companies that we call implementation partners. And these companies have expertise working in space and they assist with integrating the experiments that our user community proposes. They are experts in translating what you do in your laboratory into something that can be done in space. There is a subset of implementation partners that we refer to as commercial service providers. These commercial service providers own and operate on-orbit assets to provide payload hosting and operating services as well. So these are our key partners in helping to manage the ISS National Lab. I also wanted to mention that we are very actively engaged with the investor community. We have fostered introductions to our investor network, which currently consists of about 200 members. And these are investor, investors that are very interested in staying engaged with the unique research that is happening on the ISS National Lab. There are companies and projects that they may want to invest in and help promote the growth of a space-based economy. 
Now, since NASA is our sponsor, CASES is only able to work with U.S. researchers, so U.S. principal investigators and U.S. entities. So please be sure that you meet those criteria if you are responding to this research announcement and submitting a proposal. Throughout the year, you will see a variety of research announcements seeking proposals for specific focus areas, and you should visit our website to learn more about these opportunities. For this research announcement, we are seeking projects and proposals with clear pathways to practical applications that can provide tangible value back to the organization doing the work, and as I mentioned before, ultimately back to the nation. So we're after project outcomes that are going to drive economic benefits, either directly or maybe indirectly. It may be the testing of a product, for example, that resolves a key technology hurdle, which then allows you to go to the marketplace with that product. Or maybe it enhances and expands the market reach for that product. If you are familiar with technology readiness levels and you speak that language, then for this research announcement for your proposal, you should be considering maturation of technology that is currently somewhere around a TRL-4 or higher, and then looking to raise that to somewhere around TRL-7 or higher. And your proposal should very clearly support these ranges. So here are those same concepts re-emphasized. Again, thinking in terms of your proposal, having a line of sight to commercial application, think in terms of enabling a commercial offering to an end user after you conclude your work on ISS. The idea is that this research announcement is very broad. Maybe you have a device that's based on quantum technology that you wanna fly up to the ISS and test quantum communications. Could be something to do with a supercomputer, artificial intelligence, or automation, or robotics, or remote sensing, or biofabrication, or thin film deposition, or exotic optical fibers, or testing new therapeutics. We're excited to see your ideas. It is helpful to remind the research community why you would want to conduct research in space. The ISS National Lab provides the opportunity for scientific and technological discoveries under the unique and persistent conditions of spaceflight, which you cannot replicate on Earth. I like to tell researchers that doing research in microgravity is like looking at your research topic with a brand new lens of discovery. Microgravity has profound effects on both physical and living systems. The environment outside the space station is extreme and useful for accelerating materials testing and durability. Thirdly, the space station provides a unique vantage point from which to study our planet. Your proposal should very clearly state why you need to conduct your research on the space station. Next, we have a short video for you with some examples of space station research that might get your creative ideas flowing. Adidas, the shoe and apparel giant, will be sending its proprietary Boost shoe technology to station for evaluation. With this experiment, Adidas will observe the flow of different sized foam particles of microgravity to improve product design for athletes around the world. Delta Fawcett will investigate water droplet formation on the space station to enhance the company's H2O kinetic showerhead technology. This technology takes an innovative approach to water conservation by controlling the size and speed of water droplets so the water pressure feels the same even though the showerhead is dispensing less water. This study will explore ways to better control water droplets to further enhance the H2O kinetic technology. Not only is Northrop Grumman the launch service provider for this mission, but they're also sending a payload of its own as a technology prototype demonstration. SharkSat is a small payload that will mount to the Cygnus spacecraft with a mission to collect telemetry data demonstrating the feasibility of new sensors and processing new technologies in low Earth orbit. 
Made in Space will be launching a ceramic manufacturing facility that will leverage microgravity to produce turbine components with improved performance for use in the aerospace industry. This is the latest step by the company to expand its in-space manufacturing capabilities for consumers on Earth. Three projects on this mission are funded by the National Institutes of Health through its joint multi-year tissue chips in space initiative with the ISS National Lab. Tissue chips are small devices engineered to grow human cells on an artificial scaffold to model the structure and function of human tissues. Studying tissue chips in space may accelerate pathways for understanding disease and developing new treatments for use on Earth and beyond. Bristol Myers Squibb, a leading pharmaceutical company, is launching a protein crystallization investigation aimed at improving drug formulation and delivery for patients on Earth. In this experiment, the team will study the crystallization of monoclonal antibodies in space to improve their crystallization back on the ground. Monoclonal antibodies are lab-created proteins designed to interact with specific targets called antigens and are used in the treatment of several diseases, including cancer. Please visit issnationallab.org. The ISS National Lab offers state-of-the-art hardware and facilities, providing a wide range of research equipment and systems for enabling advanced R&D and technology demonstration. The space station is well-stocked. It's a world-class multidisciplinary laboratory. I encourage you to review the available facilities using the links that have been provided in the research announcement instructions. I mentioned earlier that there are implementation partner companies that help you to translate your experiment from something you do in your lab into something that can be done in space. We encourage you to visit our implementation partner database and begin engaging in conversations with these entities early. Some of you may need to get a realistic order of magnitude estimate of what your project might cost, especially if you're new to space. So a conversation with implementation partners would be a very helpful way to start. Let's talk about funding. For the sake of this discussion, you can think of the cost of doing an experiment on the ISS basically in three categories. One category consists of your direct costs. So your time, your people's time, your equipment, fabrication costs, testing that you would do on the ground to prepare for space. For this research announcement, we expect you to cover those costs. The second category of costs are the implementation partner costs. As I mentioned, when it comes to doing space-based work, and particularly on the ISS, it's essential to have an implementation partner alongside you. The funding we have set aside for this research announcement is to assist with the implementation partner category of costs. The third category of costs is the launch to the ISS, the cost of any crew resources that you may need to actually perform your experiment, and resources to get your samples or your data home to Earth. This category will be 100% covered. Maybe that's all you need for your project. If you're able to self-fund everything else, then that could result in what we call an unfunded agreement. Once we select an award, the time that it takes before your experiment would fly to the ISS depends largely on the complexity of what you're trying to do, as well as the availability of supply vehicles. Generally, it varies from about 12 to 18 months. Thus, we expect that about three years uh, from when we award a project, the work should be finished. So how do you actually get to an award? we have a two-step process. The first step is to submit a concept summary. Those are short, maybe two or three pages, and they're due on May 24th. If you can get your concept in earlier, that's better, because if it's then selected, you'll have more time to work on the next phase, which is a full proposal. But during the concept summary, Review, we do a high-level review uh, for operational feasibility, for scientific and technical scope, 
and we also do a preliminary compliance review. If you pass that step, we will contact you and invite you to submit a full proposal, which will be due by July 12th. Again, step two is only by invitation. And during step two, we have a process to help you find an implementation partner. And so part of the documentation that you will provide when you're submitting your proposal at the end of step two is with your implementation partner, a scope of their work uh, and their budget, which will be incorporated into the overall budget for your proposal. The proposal evaluation process and the criteria that we use is all detailed in documents that are available on the website. So again, if you go to our webpage, you can download all of the instruction documents. We encourage you to review them thoroughly. There are more resources listed here. Uh, there's an email listed that is directly to our operations team. They can help you decide uh, and, and assess feasibility questions. And again, on our website, issnationallab.org, you will find uh, more resources, including the types of facilities that are available on the space station. You will find our implementation partner directory and, and examples of research that has already been conducted. We will now move to the Q&A section of our webinar.